Greetings and welcome to the introduction to Python scripting and Grasshopper webinar. Before we get started, uh, let's just do a quick sound check. So um, go ahead and type in the uh, questions window or chat window um, to confirm that you're that you're hearing the audio. Okay, great. So um, once again, welcome to the Introduction to Python Scripting in Grasshopper webinar. Uh, this webinar is uh, generously supported by Arch Daily. Thank you very much, Arch Daily, for your support. And we are really excited to uh, conduct this webinar with uh, such a large and uh, diverse audience. Again, um, we have um, many of you coming from all over the world to participate in this free webinar, and that's really exciting for us. So uh, this webinar is going to be about using Python scripting inside of Grasshopper. And Python is the most intuitive uh, programming language we've found for learning and developing powerful scripts. Beginning with a presentation on the main principles of scripting and the uh, specifics of scripting with Python, this webinar will incrementally unpack a diverse set of programming techniques through a series of live exercises with Python and Grasshopper. With two instructors offering guided curriculum and continuous support, it really is our goal to provide you with an in-depth and personal learning experience. Additional topics covered will also include the basics of scripting with Python, where to look for help and additional references, and when there might be opportunities to script in Rhino natively versus scripting with Python in Grasshopper. So by way of introductions, I'm Gil Akos, and here with me is Ronnie Parsons. We are Mode Collective, and we are a multidisciplinary design collective located in Brooklyn, New York. And we have three sets of activities that we engage in under the names of Lateral Design and Lab. So we offer um, custom tool creation and digital fabrication consulting services through Lateral, and we have a proper design uh, and maybe a more traditional design studio where we uh, work on client projects and commissions and competitions and things like that. And then we also have um, uh, the lab portion of our of our design studio where really this is a, a share source initiative which consists of both a web repository for uh, sharing knowledge as well as um, uh, it also includes uh, other activities which include monthly webinars, and bi-monthly workshops hosted here in our studio. So you've already been to uh, Mode Lab, which is the website for our the lab portion of our studio. And um, here's where you can find all of the learning resources that we share. And this you've already been here because you've registered for the webinar. And um, you can also um, see on the Mode Lab website that we have a series of, um, of workshops that we conduct, um, one of which recently was the patterning lab on parametric patterns and digital fabrication. And here, the idea with the workshops are that we have a in-person and hands-on intensive learning experience over the course of the weekend, which frequently looks at issues related to digital fabrication, uh, related to design and technology. And hopefully you've also uh, connected with us on Facebook, and um, we're really using our Facebook page as a way to share the most current and up-to-date information related to our events and learning resources. Um, it's also a place where you can begin to connect with other uh, mode, la mode Lab attendees and begin to exchange additional information and learn from each other that way. So if you haven't already, um, check out our Facebook page. Here's the URL backslash mode collective. Um, and again, that's where you're going to find the most up-to-date and um, current information related to upcoming events. So what are the topics we're going to cover today? Um, first, we're going to talk about uh, what Python is and how do you even start to create scripts. We're also going to look at what are variables, iteration, and recursion. And we're also going to look at what are the benefits of scripting in Grasshopper. Particularly, you know, we can script in Python and we can do that in Rhino. So why would you why would you want to do that in Grasshopper as opposed to just in Rhino? So if you've decided that you do want to script inside of Grasshopper, 
we're going to look at how you can take an existing Python script and use it within the Grasshopper interface. And then lastly, we'll talk a little bit more about where you can find additional references and help, um, both in print and online formats. So um, just briefly before we get started, um, a little bit of information related to the um, administration of the webinar. Uh, the webinar is going to last two and a half hours, so we'll go just past 4.30 e, uh, EST. And we're going to do a series of exercises with uh, Q&A after each exercise. The webinar is going to be recorded and distributed later as a series of shorter videos that you can come back and reference uh, in the future. We'll also include the PDF of the PowerPoint um, in a collection of uh, file, the instructor files that we share after the conclusion of the webinar. So you should have received an email with a link to the webinar source files. That should be in your chat window. Um, I'll pull mine over just so you can um, take a look. Here's the information for um, downloading the files here that we're going to go over. The Python add-on, which you'll need for Grasshopper. And a quick reminder, you have to be running version 5 of Rhino, Rhino 5, in order to use Python, uh, Python scripting. So be sure to install that if you haven't already. So um, I'll be conducting the, um, the presentation and going over the exercise files with you, and Ronnie will be answering technical questions on the fly. So you should really feel comfortable um, going to the uh, chat window or asking a question through the GoToMeeting interface because um, Ronnie will be answering questions as they arrive. And if there are any consistent questions that come up, he's going to redirect them to me and we'll address them um, as a group. And really what we want to do here is create as much of a live and hands-on experience for you as possible. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and then uh, dive into the uh, webinar content proper. All right, so we said that we were going to look at scripting with Python in Grasshopper. So before we get um, started with doing that, we have to actually understand or review what Grasshopper is. All right, so Grasshopper is a node-based algorithm editor integrated with Rhino 3D's modeling tools. All right, so... What Grasshopper does is allows us as users to define logical relationships between multiple design parameters, thereby defining a parametric model. So if we contrast that with um, a script, which we'll see here on the left, Grasshopper, which is node-based, as we see here on the right, allows us to visually define the relationships within a program. So we're connecting outputs to inputs, creating a kind of logical diagram that then results in some particular thing. So what we see here on the right is grasshopper, and that's creating a curve. Over here on the left, this is um, actually in Rhino script, but this does the exact same thing. The difference is one prefaces a kind of visual interfacing, and one prefaces a text or syntax bound interfacing. So both of, those thing, both of those examples actually do the exact same thing. They draw a series of sine curves. All right, so um, if we, if, and what's nice about, let's say, Grasshopper is that um, if you're in the creative fields, um, you're, you're going to be much more, um, you're going to have a tendency to have much more success working with something that's visually based as opposed to textually based. The syntax bound version of this um, this program to draw some sine curves is actually a little bit more technical and a lot more abstract than, let's say, the visual program here. So that's one of the great benefits of Grasshopper. But Grasshopper also has its limitations. It only does exactly what you tell it, and minimally will you be able to discover something that you didn't expect. That's where scripts come in, right? Script, to define what a script is, it's just any program written for a software environment that, automate, that automates the execution of tasks. Okay, so what does that mean? We're going to tell the computer to do a series of actions, and it's going to be 
relative to a particular software environment, such as Rhino or Katia or even Adobe Illustrator, and it's going to automate the execution of those tasks. So another way to talk about what scripting is, the kind of action um, word that goes along with writing scripts, scripts being the actual thing, thing that you type and tell the computer what to do with, to look at what scripting might be, we, we could look to uh, Mark Burry and his book, Scripting Cultures. Right? So at its simplest, scripting affords a significantly deeper engagement between the computer and the user by automating routine aspects and repetitive activities, thus facilitating a, facilitating a far greater range of potential outcomes for the same investment in time. So that's a really long sentence, but really it gets at the kind of crux of what we might do with uh, writing scripts. As a designer, what it allows us to do, or an engineer, or whatever profession you're in, it allows us to engage the interaction between us and the computer in a very particular and specific way. In any, in any uh, application, let's say we're modeling in Rhino, we're to a certain degree, constrained by what we can do by the interface, the buttons, the how Rhino looks, etc. But if we go into um, a process where we're writing scripts, it allows us to get really deep and specific about the things that we're asking the computer application to do. And the, the interesting thing is that if we invest the same amount of time in, let's say, modeling an object, uh, we may be able to, through scripting, um, in the same amount of time, write a script that will produce that same object, or even better, it has the capacity to produce many of those objects, or many different versions of, those, of that particular object. So really, it allows us to engage the computer and the application we're using in a very specific and um, potentially, um, uh, or in a way that allows us to kind of privilege discovery. 